you know, my grandmother used to tell me um, all kind of stories, mo'olelo, about growing up in Pio Noa and growing up in White Pio and the kupua of this area and the kupua of that area. And how when she used to go with her father, um, they had to make ho'okupu for certain things. At certain places, you got to put the, the honeybee, um, the beeswax in your ear, you got to put burlap on your head. I used to tell my grandmother, I go, how come, ma? She said, because when you go to this kind of place, they let you go, but you can okay, look them. So you put the bag on the head. I go, really? Mm. Interesting. Interesting kind of olelo. Oh, kind. So I know plenty kind. That's all my grandmother used to tell me all the time, different stories. You know, over here, you see that pond over there? Underneath, get one cave, the thing, all the way to the kai, the po'e, hi'u'i'a. I go, what is that, my hi'u'i'a? It's the mermaid. Yeah, they come, they come over here. They come, they come inside because over here get all the, get all the hua, the hua mai They like eat. So they come over here, and, but when the kanaka come, they hear many, and they come inside, they put him in the water. So you come, you put over here, you put the, you put the honeybee. She call them the honeybee, but mm -hmm. it's beeswax. So <laughs> put the honeybee inside your ear. And then they put the burlap. And so I go, so how you know where you're going? She go, the donkey. The donkey know where for go already. So we sit on a donkey we we just go. Hmm. Do you do you believe all the folklore? Oh yeah, you. Yeah. Oh, some is kind of a little far fetched, but um, I had my own experiences with certain things. Night marchers. Uh not so much. Not so much. Um, but because um, uh, God forbid if I ever see that kind of stuff. But <laughs> I have my own um, run-ins with kupua. If you've seen one kupua, that's enough. Mm -hmm. You don't need to see any more. Yeah. But um, not to be confused with kepolo or uhane or just ghosts. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Like kupua. Mm -hmm. Hawaiian kupua. Cool. Get you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, kamaka get. Especially our island. Hawaii yeah. island. Oh, I remember. Oh, we, 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 we camped in the sixth grade at... Ke'e, I think it was called. Mm -mm. I think it was on Kona. the Kona side. Ke'e, and then uh, as you're, when you're a kid, I don't know your your friends is kind of like make trouble, yeah. But I don't. I swear, one time they were talking about the night marches, or we like would hear stuff, and they said, you know, if you see the night marches, you got to take off your clothes and like stay still. Yeah, they say all kinds of stuff. They, they say, say all kinds of stuff. Yeah. They say they tell you, you God, God hope you get on Ohana inside there, because if they get, if you get, then they don't bother you. Yeah, but. I never had a run in with them, mm -hmm. like seeing them or anything, but I have heard it. Because mm -hmm. in Pihonua, we get two trails that I know of, that I was made aware of. And in Pihonua, back then, quiet that. You can hear a pin drop up, up Pihonua. We can hear the drums. Late at night, two o'clock in the morning. You sure that was in Jordan? No, I was in Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> It's an interesting thing because it sounds like pahu. Yeah, yeah. It's not like like a drum set like we're thinking of music. It's more like, -dum -dum -dum, like yeah, yeah. It's a trip. Yeah. So I on one occasion, actually several occasions in Pihonua where I come from, I've heard the drumming, um, and then my grandmother heard them too. And she she tell me get the jack, get in your yeah. room, go sleep, and she shut the door. She put salt around the house, and then um, the other time, we saw uh, llama up in the forest, coming down, like a line of llama. Mm -hmm. So I told my grandmother one time, Ma, what is that? She go, what you looking at? I go, what is that? She go, get in the car. <laughs> <laughs> and we went home. <laughs> oh, interesting. But that was that was the night marches, but the, the kupua kind of stuff, I've saw, I've seen this certain kind of kupua three times already in different parts of Hawaii Island. I saw them once in Kohala, um, in Pololu. I saw them another time in um, Lai Kavai, Hilo. And then I saw them another time in uh, the Kilauea Flats as you're going towards Kau after you pass the Mauna Loa, Mauna Loa Road. But there's a certain kupua who has real frizzy, frizzy, frizzy orange hair. Bright, 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 big yellow eyes and get this kind of teeth. Mm -hmm. Big, big face and a smile go literally from ear to ear. Mm -hmm. I've seen them three times in wow. those three places. 
And uh, just for people who don't know what that means, I'm, I know you're probably thinking it's kind of like if you think of a, um, it's not like a, a ghost, it's like a mo- like a monster kind yeah, of like demigod like, kind. Demigod, like if you think of some so, something in mythology, I'm thinking of something from Alice in Wonderland. Like that, yeah. that's kind of what I think when I think of a kupua. That kind. Yeah. So you know, in my family, on my on my on my mom's the kamapua. Yeah, yeah. On, on my mom's side. Uh, we had both kahuna la'o lapa'au and kahuna ana'ana. And my dad's side was all kahuna ana'ana. And up to my, on my dad's side, my, my great-grandmother's passing, up until her death, she was 14th or 16th generation kahuna ana'ana, an unbroken chain. Wow. And they, were, they, they used to call her, um, and every all the kupuna in Papaiko knew of her. They used to call her Tutu Papaiko. And any kupuna you say, oh, you remember Tutu Papaiko? How do you know that name? Yeah, because she was feared in Papaiko because she was like on one kahuna you know mess around with. And that was my my kukumana. <laughs> um, you get good mana in your family then. Shucks, I never get nothing out of them. <laughs> the musical stuff, but... Um, no, so as a result... Because we come from a family of that kind of stuff. Oh, all okay, kinds stories. We know some some of them are um, encounters, firsthand experience, and then all the kupu kind of stuff. So my dad's side, my my dad's grandfather, um, and all his siblings, they had mana kamaka, they had ungodly strength, and um, their father could speak to Aumakua. Mm. And so my dad's grandfather, which is my great-grandfather, used to tell my dad nightly at their home, Aumakua come to the house, asking their father for help to help them. Um, And and I used to ask my father, what do you have to help them with? My dad didn't know. And then later on, I met one of my uh, my grand-aunts and they told me, she said, oh, because Tutu Papa, um, was the only one that could talk to them and he would help them go to the next place. Mm. I don't know what that means. Yeah. But she said, oh, yeah. So um, there's, you know, um, when they used to do all those Manalea in- interviews, not the one that um, like Kimura did, the one with, um, they had the Polo Kalamu. And it's like you can find on YouTube, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I remember. So there was one, and her name is um, her name is Helen Averos. She 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 was living here, but her maiden name is Awa. She from um, Kauai Hayuka Waimea, Big Island. It's my grandfather's sister that they interviewed her like several times. And, you know, usually in those kind of interviews, they they talk to the kupuna and they say, "Oh, do you have any more lelo you can share with us from your whatever." And so she would tell him, oh, yeah, my father, blah, blah. And she tell him the story. They don't know what for say after. But they're all, all in shock. And get the one out of tutu that always helped them with the Bolokolamu. And she always, she's very Christian, eh? But my, my grand aunt's telling about all the kind of opposite Christian stuff. Mm-hmm. She's like, don't know what for say. But she was, she was, even on that interview, she tells, oh, yeah. Oh, the kupu will come our house. Oh, the omokua. She said, the enu he come. The iole nu he come. So all this, so I used to tell my auntie Helen, I go, Auntie Helen, Kela, Kela, Kela Iole Nui, Yaka Ino, Kela, Kela Iole. Uh, uh, she said, she, she told me her own name. She said, I, Loa Kekahi, uh, Inua Kela Iole, Ahi Ole Nui, uh, Hokumke, Iole Nui, Kumako Hale, I, I, Kawaihuka, Kawaihuka, Kawaihaiuka Nei. Because just like leaking me out, I go, oh wow. Oh, wow. She said, I think taught then. Talking about a big rat. <laughs> yeah. But like as tall as us. Yeah, big Iole. Oh. She said, but her brother had mana like her father. Could talk to to Amakua. And they was living Kauai Hayuka at the time. And her, their school was on just um, below the road, the old road for Waikiki. He used to have one school, the old Waikiki road. And so from Kawaii Hayuka to this, Mamao. So they had to take the horse and they would leave the house at about 
Ah, one, one in a clock, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, and start making their way. So by the time school start, they just arrive. And so she said she was young because she was two years younger than her brother. So he would tie her on top the up to the saddle, and she said just kind of <laughs> never level all over the the house. And then she remember when they would um when they start traveling, her brother used to chant. Iole Manaku is the name of the rat. Mm-hmm. She said, she said, oh yeah, when we when I go, mako mako hu kaihana uh, loeva ko ka oliana ko uplala. Oh here oi iole manaku ku ku hoa o ke o moe. Ehele ni paho oi me me maua a ehele no kaua. Kind of like inviting them, like yeah. not, not and showing and my auntie, my auntie tell me she go. <laughs> but she's like she's telling this story she's like oh I thought my brother was only singing but when all when you only came you yeah. only come yeah. and, and kahu them that's so cool all and, so, and then so when this brother this brother would get mighty because mm-hmm. that va had you know get okay mighty yeah and so he had got influenza and he had make. And so in the, after we in Hala, she said her brother's body was in the, was in the kitchen after he make. Yeah, so this is in the early 1900s. They bury him themselves there. Eh? So she said, my mother was outside doing something. My father was outside stay, stay making um, for brother. And then I all of us said it. I walk in the kitchen. Yo, big rat inside. I think it's more big than me. She said, Moto. She yeah, ran outside. She yelled, Mama, Mama. Hey, Iole, Nui, Loko Kahale. Dang. You don't hear about stories like that these days. I get plenty of stories like that in my family. Huh. Maybe it's a, yeah, it's, a, it's from family to family. I don't have any stories like that in my family. That's so cool, though. So my... Um, as I mentioned earlier, my grandmother, we raised with our families from Kohala, YPO, Ka'u. And so, you know, when, when Kupuna get together, they all kind of old, more little old stories. So when I got a little bit older, my grandmother used to tell me all kinds of stories. And I used to ask questions. I go, Ma, you know when uh, uh, Uncle William guys used to come for Ka'u? What you guys used to do? She goes, ah, well, I don't really know. Like, what you guys talk about? She goes, ah, poekau hilea, poekau aihulama, poekau enuhe. I go, where is all that? She goes, oh, hilea is makai. I go, I go where is um, all the other people? She goes, oh, mountain. Ina, ina oi mai kamauna mai, and o mako mai kekahakai mai. That's how the Ahupua the system Kui started. <laughs> right there. Because her father, her father was, um, he was a, not game warden, but forest ranger. Mm-hmm. And he would, mal- he malamba, certain uh, ranges in Ka'u. So he used to live Ka'u. And then that's how we get Ohana in Ka'u. Um, so she used to tell me all the stories about Ku Mauna and uh, Pu'u Enuhe and the Po'ehilea. And then she tell me all the stories about um, her, her tutu folks in, Wai, in Waipio. Oh, that's oh, a, my that's God. a trippy story. Waipio, here. that's the... We we camped over there too one time, or not camp, but we stayed there for school. And our son will come up to after oh, ten you. I that that mana down there, I getting chicken skin. Yeah, think about it's scary. Just to let you guys know, for whoever listening, that's spiritual. Down if there. you ever find yourself in YPO after dark, don't go lingering, don't go wandering around. No, uh, that, that's honest to God truth. Oh, don't don't mess around with that stuff. Yeah, YPO is that's the the valley of the mana. the kings, right? The chiefs. Yeah. Long time. You, see, you know when you go to YPO and you look from the scenic point, you look straight across mm-hmm. the donkey, the zigzag trail, yeah? Mm-hmm. The Waimanu trail. You can hike that one, yeah. 
Huh? Me. No, no, no. But like you, in general, like you yeah, can. You can. Yeah. yeah, not me personally. <laughs> that would be like my death. But <laughs> so at the very bottom of that trail, they call it Waimanu Trail. If you look from a certain um, angle out, um, on the scenic point, you see one Hale right at the bottom. But then Hale stay behind against the wall of the valley. You know, protrusion that comes out from the valley wall is on boulder, just big boulder. My grandmother told me a story. She said, a long time ago, on the beach, right where that um, the base of Waimanu Trail is, she said, you used to have one puka on the beach. I said, puka? She said, yeah, well, big anna mm -hmm. on the beach. I said, and she said, I told her, what is that? And she said, yeah, so the other side of that is Molokai. She said, she said, oh, the lapu, oh, the kepalo, they travel between Molokai. You ever heard of that? How no. This, so the, in the old days... Was like, like a cave or something? No, it's one like one portal thing. A oh, portal? Oh. Yeah, they would open up on the, on the, mm. on the beach. Um, and it, it's, 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 not a, it's not just YPO. I've heard it in other places too. Molokai and Nanae and Kauai. But YPO used to have too. And so this thing would open and out come all these freaking things. And so at that point in time in YPO's history, oh, YPO had hard time with all oh, this Kepalo and these things running about and create havoc in YPO. And so my grandmother told me that all this, all the elders would get together. They went into the back of YPO Valley and they had Oli and they would chant. And they, they, this took so many days to do. So non-stop chanting from the back of the valley, and they made their way down, down, down to the beach. And as they only, they push all the kepalo out of the valley. And when they, they had uh, trouble because that uh, portal thing that opened up on the beach went closed, and never no place for go. One of my great-grandfather's brothers, my tutupaele, them they were tasked with making this cave. So at the very base of the Waimanu Trail where this protrusion thing I was telling you, um, that protrusion is a boulder. You remove that boulder, it's a cave. What they did was they chant all this kepalo and stuff down to the bottom of Waipio into that cave and they went cap them. So if you go there today, if you ever go to the base of Waimanu and you walk about 30 yards to the left, you can see this thing coming out, hold on. Chuggle, put your ear on that rock. 